All right. I'm so glad you guys came tonight. Thank you. We have a few people missing, but uh, you're here and we'll just move forward. I want to go over, review a couple things with you first before I get into my presentation. One is the miracle list. So here at Arizona Deliverance Center, we have something called self-deliverance. We have something called Steps to Freedom. Both are a version of the miracle list, okay? If you go on the Hardcore Christianity website, you can request the miracle list, and then Mike sends you a copy of what I got up on the screen. This is the one that I'm working from, but I've made one little change to it. And so I'm just going to scroll down and show you. So number one, the first week I went over, a, make a literal numbered list of the people in your life who've hurt you significantly. That's what we did right for the first week. The second week we talked about making a literal numbered list of the things you don't like about yourself. We went over that. Number three is talking about dysfunctional parents. That is on... Um, I think that is not on the list that Mike will send you when you request it. Okay. It's on another list, so I included it in the class. Just so you, this is cleared up. Number four, uh, negative thoughts. Number five, godly sorrow, which we will cover tonight. Now, there are other things on this list that I've incorporated earlier. So I'm not going down the list, the miracle list, chronologically, I'm kind of t pulling things that are lower down on the list and pulling them up to the week. So, um, for example, this list that I'm currently working off of has 18 items. One of them is like, for example, number six says, read John chapter 14, 15, 16. I think I mentioned that week two a part of renewing your mind, okay? It's number six. I'm not waiting till week six to talk about that. I already mentioned it on week two. So that's what I mean. Um, getting a copy of Pigs in the Parlor, I mentioned that the very first week, even though it's on number eight here on the list. Um, number nine, stop complaining and blaming yourself. I mentioned that the very first, first week also. So. If, you ha if you're the type of person who's got the list and you're checking it off, right? Every week, Drea is like, yeah, that's me. I, so now I'm con maybe I've confused you because you're like, you're mentioning something that's not on my list. Okay. I don't want to cause problems. <laughs> so what I want you to do is email me. If you want the list that I'm working from, which is a combination of Mike's Miracle List and another list that Mike calls self-deliverance. It's got the dysfunctional parents on there. I've merged them, okay? So for those of you who are trying to follow along, but you're getting frustrated because I'm not following exactly according to the numbers that you have, whatever list you have, just email me, I'll send you the digital copy, okay? All right, so that's that. The next thing I wanna to talk to you about is this. On YouTube, on the House of Healing or, or a Hardcore Christianity YouTube channel are these classes, the instruction portion. How many people have been there? Okay. Two, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so whatever's being recorded, you can see Lori's in the back. She's recording it, and then it gets uploaded. I It, it varies. I have to just uh, say I'm so pleased that the very first one I did has 3,000 views. Yeah, which is amazing. Whether the person meant to click on it or not, they clicked. And I got the views. So um, currently, uh, most of these are right of, like this one has got almost a thousand views. That was the second week. So that's fantastic. I got an email from someone from the Netherlands. Thank you very much. Uh, they just encouraged me. 
So I'm getting like random emails, encouragement. I got a text message from a gal today just saying, wow, that was a great presentation. So I feel good. Um, yeah, go on there. If there's something that you're like, wow, I wish I could hear that again. Like I didn't, I would need to like remember, what did she say I was supposed to do? Just go on YouTube and, and you know, listen. I'm trying to keep this presentation not so long. My longest one here you can see is 34 minutes. Tonight will be long because I'm gonna review and then also talk about uh, what number five is on the list, on number five on my list. Okay, so we talked about that, good. <clears throat> so um, this is not what we're talking about. I need to go back. All right, so I'm gonna have to reload this. Bear with me, please. What I do wanna mention is there's no way you could begin doing the miracle list and finish number one in one week. You can't, that's not possible, okay? So if you're feeling um, I had someone message me today and say they're feeling a little overwhelmed. They feel like they're being lazy about it because they're having trouble keeping up. I'm like, no, you're not being lazy. Um, this is meant to be done over time. I've heard Mike say that the miracle list is meant to be done like a college class. Maybe work on it twice a week and it should stretch out for three, four months, maybe six months, maybe a year, okay? Oh, I didn't even do anything. All right. Okay, so, um, so be patient with yourself. I am going through this, preparing these lessons, and I'm kind of revisiting it myself. So... All right, let's see if we can move to the next slide. So um, tonight I'm gonna be reviewing, just briefly reminding you about the weeks that we have talked about, the numbers, uh, the items on the miracle list, like number one, forgiving those who've hurt you, okay? Forgiving them God's way. You want to, uh, someone's, so people continuously hurt us, right? We just had a holiday. Maybe you got together with your family. Or you talk to somebody on the phone and somebody said something that offended you. They hurt you, okay? I heard something over the weekend and it hurt my feelings. And it was a secondhand information and it's still, I got offended. And I, and I had to work through that because I don't like how that person's acting. That hurt me. Um, we don't have the liberty of holding grudges as Christians. It will not go well with us. When someone says something or does something that hurts our feelings and we take an offense, if we hold on to it, then that gets, it almost like it burrows down into our soul and it affects us. And then we, we act out of that and we're her, and we can't hear from God. So um, there's the scripture that says, forgive and you will be forgiven. Look, you committed sins throughout your whole life, right? And the list is very long. You committed them against God. And like the picture shows, the list is super long. It's gonna run out the door. It's a super long list. Every Everyone you ever hurt, every time you ever, you know, sinned in your heart, actions. And then there are sins against you. You sinned against God, and then people have sinned against you, right? And this helps me. I had a situation about a year ago where, uh, you know, sister, she hurt me. And I was having a hard time. I could let it go here in my head, but it was affecting my emotions still. And I 
I remember sitting down with the brother Mike and he's talking to me about it and he's like, okay, that person hurts you and the list is this long. And God forgave you of this. This and this. And I remember feeling uh, yuck, you know, and I'm like, he's right. God has forgiven me of so much. And he, he continues to forgive us, right? He continually forgives us. And so he, God wants us to forgive those people who've hurt us, who've offended us. Well, he doesn't want us to be injured by it. But he's, he teaches us in the scriptures, look, forgive those people who sinned against you and you will be forgiven by me. Forgive that person who hurt you and they'll probably forgive you of what you did to them because rarely is it one-sided, right? Rarely is it one-sided. So there's that long list that we've been forgiven of and then the short list of the sins people have done to us. So I'm talking about working the steps. Week number two, we talked about releasing the things that you don't like about yourself. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that tonight in our group session. Um, I love this scripture. Matthew 6, 14, 15 says, If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. The Lord's Prayer, forgive us, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. It's all throughout Scripture. We have to do it. And it is a big sin when you don't forgive yourself. It's the same. Forgiving, not forgiving or having self-hatred, because that's what happens. You, you do something you regret, you do something you don't like, and then you, you kind of are against yourself, and then it, it turns inward. And there are a lot of illnesses, maybe I'll just take a minute to say, there are a lot of illnesses that we can see manifested when we don't forgive ourselves. <clears throat> One is autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases have been linked directly to negative feelings towards yourself. Now, uh, my family, we struggle with skin issues. And that is an autoimmune disease type of thing, like eczema, psoriasis, okay? And it has to do with emotions. I mean, even the medical community will recognize, you know, negative emotions have an impact on the physical, biological body. We know this is spiritual. But you have to come in alignment with God's word Forgive those who've hurt you and forgive yourself because you've hurt yourself. You got to stop criticizing yourself. Okay, you can think about it over the last weekend. You know, maybe things didn't go the way you planned or you made a mistake. Stop criticizing yourself. Stop blaming yourself. Stop blaming others. I mean, okay, you do something... You have to take responsibility, that's fine, but then don't drop it. You can't keep going over it again and again and again, like a bully does, right? The bully comes at you and at you and at you, and you keep, you're doing it to yourself, you're hurting yourself. Um, stomach issues, digestive tract issues is caused from this negative feelings towards yourself. I know a lot of people, they, they deal either with constipation or they're dealing with the opposite. And they have a hard time forgiving themselves. They have a hard time facing it and releasing that to God, really having an honest conversation with the Lord about it. Stop complaining. 
you got to stop it right away. I just want to remind you, week two, I mentioned it. I'll mention it again. Stop complaining about how your life is not the way you want it. Okay, you're doing something about it right now. That's good, right? You can't do anything about the past. You can look at it and say, okay, I screwed up. Now I'm moving forward. Stop complaining, stop blaming, stop criticizing, stop all that negative emotion onto yourself and your body, give your, your body a chance to heal. Give your heart a chance to heal. Uh, I'll take a minute to say uh, the last couple of weeks I've been pretty sick. I had um, a sinus infection, but I've been struggling with allergies. And I know that allergies have to do with fear. The word of God says perfect love casts out fear. And God is love. And so somewhere along, I don't have a clear understanding of God's love for me. And it manifests in allergies. So I'm going to figure it out. And God's going to help me. He's going to reveal it to me, his perfect love for me. Um, <clears throat> because God is not like my, my earthly father. He's not like my earthly mother, who were imperfect. I love them very much, but they made a lot of mistakes and they hurt us kids. God's not like that. And so uh, step number three, week three, we talked about rebellion towards dysfunctional parents. Yes, they were dysfunctional. Yes, they were addicts. They were drinkers. They were nitpickers. They were complainers. They didn't provide. They didn't protect. They, it, oh, uh, nobody's perfect, right? But the rebellion, the part of you that you have to deal with is how did you respond to them? Did you mouth off? Did you, you know... Sneak out at night. Okay, I did. I did some of that stuff. You know, coming in, we had a curfew. I would come in late, getting drunk I, before I was 21. I rebelled. I did. I know, most people did. There are very few people who did not rebel. I meet them occasionally. But you got to repent of that. And you got to apologize. I apologize, Mom. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't think she'll ever watch this, but I, I do, Paul. I, I, I love my mom very, very much. And she passed on a lot of great qualities to me. And I was, uh, I was rebellious, definitely. I didn't like the situation. It wasn't just her. It was, it was a lot of things. So I had to repent to God. I have to apologize to her. I, what I did, I have done that. I will continue, you know. Um, and release your parents to the Lord, meaning... You know, there's a false responsibility we can have for our parents and talk to the Lord about it. You have a, a responsibility to be respectful. You have a responsibility probably to stay in touch a little bit, you know. Your parents love you. Oh, they're toxic. I can't stand being around them. Okay, you don't have to talk to them long. Send them a text message. Send them an email. Send them a card. There, you don't have to interact at all. But at least you're, you know, show, showing some love. Because they did, most parents, they, they tried their best. I think most parents, they try their best. So honor them. It doesn't mean you have to be their caretaker. It doesn't mean you have to make up for all their wrong mistakes, you know. Um, a lot of... A lot of times as, as children, we, we want to make up for our, our crappy selves by giving them things or providing for them, and they don't really want that. We can't teach them anything. I heard it said that you really can't teach anyone who's changed your diaper. If, if that person's changed your diaper, you can't be their teacher. So, so just honor them, love them. Ask God to help you. Oh, let's see if I can. So um, that was week three, honoring your parents. Okay, continue to working the steps. Week four, um, we talked about negative thoughts. And what I mean by negative thoughts, I mean consistent, regular negative thoughts. You have to observe them. You have to catch them. Evaluate them. Is this from God? 
I mean, God will, will convict you of sin, and that feels pretty negative. That does not feel good. So just because it is a negative thought doesn't mean you throw it away. And just because it's a positive thought doesn't mean you keep it. You have to observe what it is you're thinking and, and look at it and say, is this, is this something I should be thinking about? Is this helpful? Is this good? Is this godly? Imaginations. The Bible tells us to cast down imaginations, lies, imaginations of destruction. Some people, they, all they can think of how everything's going to go wrong. Okay, cast that down. And some people think of how everything's going to go right. I tend to be in that category. Um, you know, kind of uh, ideas of grandeur. You got to look at all those thoughts and be like, wait a second. Is this realistic? Is this godly is this biblical what's happening here in my mind and you'll notice if you don't feel so good think about what you were thinking about just about five minutes before and you might find the culprit to your negative feelings you got to stop believing lies and you can't identify a lie if you don't know what the truth is so you have to be in the word and it really helps to have people in your life who know the word too. Because when they hear you talk, they'll catch it. They'll say, wait a second, that doesn't sound right. Wait a minute, that, that's not what the word of God says. So that is very good, you know, um, to be around some other Christians if you can. All right. Um, as a reminder, I just want to say that Plano Spirits by um, Brother Mike it's a book that talks in depth about how negative thinking causes the mind to um, not function properly, and mental illness stems from that. Okay? These consistent, regular negative thoughts, paranoia, anxiety, depression, these are all mental illnesses or characteristics of mental illness. And that book... Um, has a lot to say about it. So if, if, if you haven't read, I mean, it's not very long. It's kind of like a pamphlet book, but it's very informative. And uh, I encourage you to, you know, read a little bit of it. All right, so tonight we're talking about number five, the gift of godly sorrow. Number five in the miracle list says this, pray aggressively for the gift of godly sorrow. All of the people you may have hurt over the years and all the pain you've caused yourself, you actually hurt your Heavenly Father the most. Um, he was wounded by your behavior. You hurt his heart. He's a person. You hurt his feelings. Sorrow for hurting him is healing and life-changing. I've heard it said that we are changed in his presence. In the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. There is healing. There, that's where change happens. Now, a lot of people, I think, misunderstand what godly sorrow is, so I'm going to break it down a little bit. All right. The scripture is 2 Corinthians 7.10. It says this, Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. So godly sorrow brings repentance. Before we're sorrowful, the Holy Spirit comes and convicts us of sin. You may not even realize you've done something wrong until the Holy Spirit lets you know, hey, that was wrong. I know, Dre, you mentioned, like, I didn't even know witchcraft was wrong. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit convicted me of sin. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Tears, right? Yeah, you realize not only you had worldly sorrow because your life was falling apart, 
Worldly sorrow has to do with regret. There's remorse. You're sorry that you got hurt. Hey, worldly sorrow, it says it leads, it brings death. If I say, if you stay there, if you only have worldly sorrow, it will bring death because there's no change that happens. And you'll just be in a bunch of regret. And, and then what happens? And you feel bad about yourself. Then you're hating yourself. And then you end up with an autoimmune disease and dying. <laughs> okay? It brings death. So, but godly sorrow brings repentance. The Holy Spirit comes in and convicts of sin. And you're like, wow, I hurt God. And if you will allow that in yourself to respond emotionally, then, then you have a great chance of healing because then you can repent, which means to change your mind, change direction, all right, which leads to salvation, saving of your soul. So we, we um, repent to God. He, he helps us. He convicts us of sin before we're a Christian and we get saved. And our spirit is born again, all right? But then we go through life, and he continues to convict us of sin. Nobody becomes a Christian and then lives a perfect life, right? So there's a continuous, this is a continuous exchange that you have with God. And I'm going to talk more about it on this next slide. It's a continuous exchange. This is a relationship. If, if you have um, experienced a positive relationship with somebody, okay, you know, if you have a healthy relationship with somebody, like really healthy, or, or maybe it's just marginally healthy, you know that there has to be real conversation. Admission of screwing up. You have to admit that. They have to admit that to you. And there's, uh, there has to be conversation about it. And then uh, I'm sorry, right? Like, I'm really sorry. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to try my hardest. I'm going to tell a story. I have a good friend, Lori. Um, God bless her. We used to meet up to go hiking uh, every Saturday or go for a walk, something. We did something. And I was frequently late. Now, not just with my friend Lori, but my friend Jeanette, my friend. I mean, I could say a lot of friends. I used to be perpetually late. Everyone knows that. And not, not you. You don't know that because I have made a change in my life. But for the majority of my life, my whole family is like, oh, that's a, that's a family thing. We're just always late. Okay. And she had a, had a real hard conversation with me one day and said, I'm not gonna meet up with you anymore if you're gonna continuously be late. It's disrespectful. I felt like this big. I, I, I didn't know how to deal with this confrontational type of conversation because I never had that growing up. My mom was a, a silent treatment type of person. You did something wrong, you knew you did something wrong but she wouldn't really talk to you about it. Silence. I hate silence. But I never learned how to like talk about it. Like how do you deal with the problem? So consequently, I've had a lot of failed relationships, which was terrible, you know? So getting back to this, um, there's worldly change, right? Worldly sorrow is at its core self-centered. You're upset because you got hurt. You're upset because you lost money. You're upset because you lost property. You're upset because life isn't going the way you want it. That's worldly sorrow. It revolves around the pain of sin caused to yourself. Remorse, regret. Okay. I want to say that worldly sorrow is not 100% bad. I hope that's not going to throw anybody off. But 
you got to recognize how it hurts yourself. But a lot of times there's like the conversation with my friend that I used to go hiking with. She said, hey, you're late and you're disrespecting me. And if you want this relationship, this part of our relationship to continue, that we meet up every Saturday and we go hiking and we go for a walk and we have fellowship, then you need to change. Well, that hurt me. It, the relationship ending would hurt me. So I was motivated to change. Now, if I want real change, like what happened a couple years ago, then I, I needed to change because I hurt God. Um, I, it's rare that I'm late to service at the Arizona Deliverance Center, right? Did you know that I'm perpetually late? In the beginning, I did. In the beginning, she did. No. There's a reason. Right, right. And I typically let somebody know because I've learned. Okay. And so my whole life, I tried to be on time because I didn't like the pain it caused myself. And I kind of didn't like the hurt it caused somebody else. Although I wasn't really focused on that. I was more, it was more about me. And I'll say this, not as an excuse, but um, I used to have a panic disorder and being early caused me a lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety, so I avoided being early. That was the reason. That's, that's not a, a, an excuse, it's just the reason, it's just the fact, okay? But a couple years ago, something very dramatic happened in my life and I realized how my behavior and my attitude was affecting God. That's when I realized, I don't know, it was the Holy Spirit, he gave me a revelation how it was affecting the Lord. And I believed it. I believed that revelation. I accepted that conviction of sin. And I repented. And I had to keep changing my mind. I had to keep changing my mind to change my behavior. That's repentance. It didn't happen like, oh, I repented one time and then I changed and then, no. Like Lori just said, yeah, in the beginning, I knew that being on time was an issue for you. Yeah, it was. I was still trying to retrain this. I was trying to renew my mind still. I made it like a rule. Okay, you got to leave an hour before you got to be someplace. An hour. Oh, my gosh. I'm like usually 15 minutes even 15 minutes before, and when I know it takes me a half an hour to get there. I, I had a terrible system, terrible. Um, but I, and so godly sorrow is initiated by the Holy Spirit. You can't make it happen. You cannot make godly sorrow happen. You can cooperate with the Holy Spirit. That's your part, cooperate. Respond. When the Holy Spirit brings it to mind, respond. Talk to him. He loves you. He's a person. He just doesn't have a body like we do. He's not a person like us. We're like God. God's not like us. So godly sorrow is initiated by the Holy Spirit. It starts with conviction, like I said. Like you're going along in life. And to me, being late wasn't really an issue. I, I knew it was an issue for people, but it really wasn't an issue for me because if I was early or on time, it caused me a lot of discomfort emotionally. So I avoided it. Being late somehow relieved me of this emotional pressure of anxiety. Once the Holy Spirit, once I started accepting the conviction of the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit tried to convict me before, even sent friends to talk to me about it. I have one friend, we would meet to hike, and she's like, if you're not here by 5.30, I'm leaving without you. And she left me one time, and I had to like, you know, 
double step to get up North Mountain. And I was, and I was offended that she left me. <laughs> it was my fault. <laughs> um, God bless her, Jeanette, what an amazing woman of God. She, she held her ground and she said, you know, look, that's not okay for you to treat me this way. Um, I appreciate it. And that was God speaking through her to try to get me to see it. Uh, so finally, I, I got it. I got it now. I got it. So it starts with conviction. Then you respond. And you pray and you take responsibility. Yeah, I did that. I'm sorry, Lord. Um, and then, like I said, there's a spiritual exchange between you and God. I hope there's tears. I'm speaking to all ladies here in the room. Tears come, let them come. Let them come. Sometimes you won't be able to fight it. A lot of mine came in my car while I was driving. Um, if they come, try not to fight them. I know it's uncomfortable. I know it could be humiliating, embarrassing, but try. If the Lord is dealing with you and those tears come, let them happen because that's it's, the, it, it somehow changes from physical to spiritual, and that's when real, real change happens. And now you've entered into godly sorrow, and that's when you can be healed. It's amazing. Some beautiful scriptures. Psalms 56, 8. This is speaking of the Lord. You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all all my tears in your bottle. Don't hold them back from the Lord. I don't know anything that the Lord collects apart from tears. The Lord has a collection. Your tears. That he values that. He values our attention and he values our tears. Very valuable. Gold, not so much. That's building material in heaven. But your tears, wow. He collects them. It doesn't make sense to us, but God is different from us. Here's another scripture. Revelation 7, 17. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them and shall lead them unto living waters, fountains of waters, unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. This is in heaven. He, while we're on earth here, I guess he's collecting them, and once we get to heaven, he's now attending to us, wiping them away. They're very important to him. Very imp We are very important to him. Here's another one. Revelation 21.4. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Here on earth, we experience all those things. Hopefully not all at the same time, but it's, you know, we do though sometimes. But there will come a day when we no longer experience those things. I don't know what that'll be like, but it sounds pretty good. I've cried a lot of tears. I must have a really big bottle in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Um, <clears throat> so, you want to be building up your faith. So, I think it's really difficult to trust God if you have little faith. It's like going to the edge of a cliff. If you don't have faith that when you jump, he'll catch you, you'll be full of fear. A child stands at the edge of the pool 
and willingly jumps into their mother, father's arms, aunt, whoever. They, they willingly do it. They're, I mean, they have all that trust. We are told in Jude chapter 1, verse 20, that we must build up our faith. Everyone has been given a measure of faith, like everyone has muscles, right? You can build them up. You have to work at it. And what does he say? Building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the what? Holy Spirit. That's praying in tongues. Um, <clears throat> had a dream the other night, uh, two nights ago. It was really amazing. I, I was, I think I was like at the gym, at a gym. And I was, uh, um, if you ever heard of CrossFit, I don't know if you ever heard of this. Anyway, they have like these gigantic ropes. And they, you grab a hold of the ropes and you do this with the ropes. And they're heavy and it builds your muscles, right? Um, I can't believe I'm sharing this with you. So I'm, in my dream, I'm doing this with the ropes and I'm, uh, I'm praying, but I'm not praying in uh, English. I'm praying in sounds, syllables. I think I'm praying in tongues. Well, I went from dreaming to being awake, and I heard myself saying it as I woke up. And my, I have a cat, and she's right there next to me, and she didn't move. I, I heard myself, like, I guess I was speaking in tongues. I, 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 felt, I felt it. I don't know. It was amazing. When she was just stayed right there, and usually she's kind of, she'll startle quite easily and then take off and leave. She'll get offended, right? <laughs> so, but she didn't. She stayed, and it was like, it was so seamless. Like, I went from this dream to, to dream to in the dream to in real life. And I was, and I was worshiping. Um, I pray in tongues every day. And it is wonderful. And sometimes I do it and I don't even realize I'm doing it until after some time. And I guess it, trans it translated into my dream life because I was dreaming it and that I was in the dream and then I was awake and I was still doing it. And I was like, wow, Lord, I, I my spirit, I worship you. Um, I, wish, I wish I could have that feeling all the time of being, feeling so close to him, but um, that's not possible. We all get that when we're in heaven, I believe. Here on earth, our, our spirit, um, they call it being on the mountain. I think, it, I think those are rare times, but we need to cherish them. But if you're not engaging in your spiritual being, God is spirit. You're not going to, have encounters with him like you want to if you don't even encounter your own spirit. Does that make sense? Okay, your guys are nodding. That's good. <laughs> so I want to encourage you to keep building up your faith. Also, fellowship. Look what it says. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25. Let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Okay, we, I hear it all the time. Oh, Jesus is coming back. We're in the end times. It's the last days. Okay, I, I, I believe that. Um, they did too. For all of us, we're dying, right? Like it says that we, you know, we're not going to live forever. So either Jesus is coming back um, in eight years or Jesus is coming back when I die. But it's really not that far away. Not for me anyway. Um, maybe I get another 50 years. 
40. 40 is good. I'm good with another 40 years. But look, why should we not forsake the assembling of together, like we're assembling tonight together, right? So we can stir up love. Times are tough. I think we could use some love, right? Stirring up good works. How can you do good to someone if you're not around a someone? Um, exhorting one another, encouraging. If you're not around them, how can you encourage them? How can they encourage you? There's a lot to this. And going to church, um, slipping in and slipping out is not assembling together. That is not what that scripture means. That is not fellowship. We're going to talk later. This is fellowship. Lorraine and I, we, we chat sometimes during service or we talk uh, on the phone or whatever. That's, a, that's fellowship. We're encouraging one another. We're calling each other out on stuff. We're, we're, they talk, it talks about the words, talks about sharpening iron, sharpening iron. We're helping. We, we need support. That's why you all are here. You need support. I need support too. And so that's why I created this class, because I'm like, wow, we need support. We get a little bit of it, but we need more of it. So I want to encourage you, if you're not a part of a fellowship, if this is the only one you have here on Tuesdays in your life, that's okay. At least you're here, right? You have something. But when this class is done, make sure you you get a a part of something else. And they're not all going to think the way we think here. They're not going to have the same revelation that you have. That's okay. They don't believe in deliverance. That's okay. You know, that's all right. Oh, they're Baptists. You know, they're good people. They love to cook. It's nice. I mean, you know, whatever. Whatever the group is, church, a Bible study, maybe it's a home fellowship, maybe other Christians. Maybe it's your family. You know, encouraging, loving one another, doing good to, for them, exercising the gifts that God has placed in you to encourage each other. So fellowship, don't forget it. Um, I wish I knew what the next slide was because it's taking a little while. Okay, number 17. So this is on the miracle list that I... It, it's number 17, it's, it's on self-deliverance, that other list down at the bottom. I wanna talk a minute about this. Stick with this program. Okay, so I'm speaking from the Arizona Deliverance Center and I'm saying that for YouTube, people on YouTube. We're at the Arizona Deliverance Center. Um, Mike Smith started this ministry 20 years ago and he teaches. He teaches the Word of God. He does a great job, but he he teaches it from the perspective of a counselor. It's all relationship-based, which I personally can't see reading the Bible from any other perspective, but that's just me. Okay, I'm a counselor, so (laughs) it makes sense to me. God is about relationships. Jesus was about relationships. And and we read in the Bible about families and relationships and conflict and making up and breaking up. And I mean, it's all about normal life, right? So while you're here, I want to say, stick with us. Don't watch for just this class. Don't watch other deliverance ministries other deliverance ministers, okay? I would avoid um, other Zoom calls that are not connected with Arizona Deliverance Center. I would avoid other YouTube teachings, Facebook groups. I would avoid that because it will only confuse you. Everybody has their understanding of the scriptures. Everyone has their understanding of how deliverance works and goes. And everybody is in a process, right? We're all, and so we're doing the same thing here. So just stick with us, stick with this list, stick with me, stick with me and Lori, stick with Mike, stick, stick with Thursday nights with Rick and the Zoom call if you get on that. Um, stick with one 
a type of teaching and get everything you can get from it. And then if you feel like you need to add to it, then of course, by all means, venture out. But if you are bringing in information from, you know, uh, this deliverance minister and being on this Zoom call that's every Fridays and this one's on Tuesdays and this one's on Wednesdays and this one's on Saturdays and this one's on Sunday. You know what I mean? It gets confusing because they're going to conflict. There's just going to be a conflict somewhere along the line and then you're going to lose trust. So just stick with us, okay? Stick right here. And um, if you've already gone through deliverance, and I know if you've gone through deliverance outside of the Arizona Deliverance Center, I want you to just release what you learned, release what you experienced, okay? And just start over with us using the miracle list, okay? And I hope that we'll even get to some, some uh, you know, deliverance here in our class, all right? So that's all I have. Um, I do want to say this, if you want the list that I'm working from, like I said, I, I'm using Mike's list, he sends one out. We have copies here at the center, but there's two different copies, self-deliverance, the steps to freedom, and then they're in the miracle. Anyway, I took all that, I put it together, I have a digital form. If you want a copy of it, email me, I'll just send it to you, okay? Yeah, all right. That's all. Thank you for bearing with me. I know this was long tonight. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you.